Welcome to the Wednesday, May 17th, 2017 Select Board, Board of Health meeting in the town of Deerfield. Um, first item on the agenda is our meeting minutes of May 3rd. Make a motion to approve the minutes for, uh, was it May 3rd? Yes. May 3rd. Okay, May 3rd. I'll second the motion. Um, is there any further discussion? Nope. No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Make that unanimous, please, Pat. Um, just a quick announcement. The Municipal Guide for Flood Emergencies, I had already handed it out, but it didn't get in minutes, so we're going to do it again. Um, this was printed by UMass uh, River Smart Communities Group and put together uh, with, the, with the River Smart Group from UMass and um, the Creating Resilient Communities Group, which is part of the Franklin Conservation District. And I would like to take a special note that Kevin Scarborough, Dick Kalaszewski, and myself contributed to um, this guidance, and it's uh, what to do in a flood uh, for municipal leaders. And it was uh, a big project, mm. and we hope to have it on the website of the Pioneer Valley Conservation Districts where we'll have updated information like uh, the FEMA guidance if it, if it um, changes. But is the it? idea is to um, have, have it be a, like a little checklist. And, is that something we can have a link from our web page on to that? Oh, I guess we could. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, I guess we could. That That'd would be, be really nice, actually. Pat, why don't you do that? That's From wonderful. Our to who? Um, to the document. We can just PDF it. And yeah, if we PDF. To somebody else's website. Uh, it was the Pioneer Valley Conservation Districts. Oh, okay. um, it's Franklin, Hampshire, Hamden Conservation Districts. Is it on theirs, though? Uh, it, it's called the Pioneer Valley Conservation but, District. But is that, is that on Oh, on no. We could um, just put, the, uh, put that right on ours. That's yeah. Oh, question. okay. What well, you, you know what? Deb, Debbie has this. Debbie Schreiber has okay. this on PDF, PDF, so we can link it. And that actually would probably be easier for yeah. us to maintain. Okay. I'm in communication but thank you, for, thank you for putting it in the minutes. You don't, don't put it in the minutes, so we're hoping to have another free printing from UMass. But. That was why we're doing it. It's just on cable television. I know. It's okay. <laughs> I, well, UMass printed it for free, so um, we're them. hoping to get more. Thank them for that. Um, that was the purpose of putting it in our minutes, mm -hmm. so we can send the minutes. You're giving your secrets I know, away. I know. I give my <laughs> secrets away. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is Sleckman's comments. Do you have anything you wanted to talk about the school roof, maybe? Um, no, I think that that's pretty well wrapped up. Um, I did have to sign another thousand dollar approval for leftover paperwork from RDA. Um, I called uh, Pink and Company to find out what it was and they said it was just leftover. I did speak with Brenda about it and she showed me in past invoices where it had been billed but not paid and she wasn't sure why but um, it came back as being unpaid so I signed it and I, I presume she paid it. Okay. Um, okay. I, I wanted to mention this thing about the insurance. Yeah, uh, I was going to bring that. You're going to bring that up. You want to do it later? I'm going to bring it on. I'm going to have it before your meeting. Go ahead and talk All right. about it. Good luck. Uh, this thing about you know uh, signing an intent letter to uh, enter in, not really enter, to listen to changes in our health insurance policies. Uh, if you if you sign this notice of intent, all it all you're basically saying is that you're going to listen to whatever. Okay. Um, you know, terms that, you know, they're going to propose. Here's my folder um, on it. Yeah. They, they, are going to, um, they are going to have some changes to try to, uh, you know, curb the uh, skyrocketing cost of the insurance. Um, however, the group insurance trust, whatever they decide to do, whether the town of Deerfield and its unions choose to accept it or not is totally up to us, but it's not, it's nothing that we can bargain with them with. They're going to change it. And you know we either accept it or we look for another carrier. That's what I was at an education summit at GCC last night, yeah. and um, I was talking to somebody from the MTA, and they, they brought this up to me, and they were they were you know, I guess I would say concerned, but they, they wanted to find out if we had been approached or if I had been approached about it, and how our select board would would look at this. His concern, he was wondering why the push to adopt it that. Like there was a quick adoption, he wasn't sure when the um, 
Maybe you might know more about this, well, Wendy, but, but he was concerned that it was taking bargaining rights away from... It's going right by the statute. It's extremely complicated, yeah. purposefully I didn't know. detailed, so the unions get notification of the consideration gotcha. of it. I see. And you've got to tell the... It's, I'll have it for you at an okay, upcoming be meeting. But yeah, it's, it was just... Uh, it's but just the, the original, what, what the um, Group Insurance Trust wants us to, to sign something just saying that we'll consider listening to this. That's all, that's all that so we're that's doing. The first yeah. process. That's the first, first process. Step. I see. And that uh, thing, you, you don't need any real notice or anything like that. But once we have what the changes are going to be, uh, it's been suggested that uh, we do post it and give people a, at least a 48-hour notice and that we have two separate meetings, you know, to, you know, discuss what the changes are. Uh, but it, it's been brought to my attention that other people, like uh, Mike Sullivan, uh, who has, is her South counterpart, Hadley. South Hadley, mm -hmm. you know, has been looking into health insurance costs and or different policies for years, and they've never come, found That's anybody to come close to what the... Uh, group know. insurance trust is offered, uh, but they're they're just trying to head off you know a major impact. So they're looking at some alterations. And mm -hmm. I just I'm, I'm 100%. We, we have to do this that. before okay. July first um, or July whenever the next meeting of health trust is. Yeah. They've asked all their member units. It's very it's complicated. I'll explain it when we get to doing it. I'm trying to sort it through, but we it's a whole bureaucratic thing with notifications and timing and certified letters and all of this mm -hmm. kind of right. I'll yeah. but, have it for but you. But the, the, the original part of signing for, to, for that notice to listen doesn't really obligate us to do anything. Except follow a very strict procedure. Mm. And so I'm making sure those ducks in order and the language is right and how we, we right. notify. Okay. And in our case, we would be giving notice and it only applies to collective bargaining. It doesn't apply to non-unionized employees. Right. I think it would be nice if it did, if we're going to, you yeah. know, so that would be our police teachers. and our, our school teachers. Right. Our, our, whoever's in the bargaining unit at elementary. the elementary school. So, um, and I think the regional school, oh, maybe the they're in a different, are, separate, are they on GIC? Unit. Right. But separate are they unit. on the GIC? Or are they on the? No, well, they're school? on the Hampshire Trust, okay. too. Right. We, that, so, that was a huge deal to get them to switch over yeah. from the superintendent's group to Hampshire Trust, but there was like a million dollars worth of savings. But they are a separate unit than the yes. town. Yes. 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 So they have to, you're, they have you're to go through doing, their own Oh, no, you're stuff. not on the regional No, I'm not on the regional. Yeah. Um, mo many of the communities who have done this, gone through this process, have done it because they've gone to the GIC, the state insurance program. And they the have GIC to go through the same more process. Expensive. I know. All I'm explaining is oh, that the process, okay. um, many. That was why we didn't do many, it. I yeah. think the statute right. got enforced yeah. mostly because yeah. so many communities started moving away from their own plan or the health trust plan they might have been in, or Maya or whatever, and they've gone on to. So, but um, it's going to be, it's a lot to manage, make sure every town does it, every unit mm -hmm. does it correctly. So okay. I will have that for you. I'm okay. Pre I'm preparing thank that you. for you. Did you have anything? I just wanted to thank everybody for electing me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I was here, uh, I think I was tail end of the meeting last time, but um, I'm so excited to be on for a full three-year ter three term. Well, so, I have to say we're excited that you got reelected. Congratulations. Thank you yes. very much. We're very excited. Woo! It's <laughs> <laughs> really good. Um, I just want to mention that um, <laughs> remember to use a perithium and uh, cheap spray. You can get Bronco Equine spray for your ticks. You can they spray down your awful. shoes and this year, awful. and legs. There, when we have a good acorn crop, which we did two years ago, you get an explosion of mice, and then you get the vector that increases the ticks. And so we have this huge tick we population huge today tick problem. because of the huge mouse pop population. You so grow, you grow acorns. Yeah, but that's got lots of acorns. Yes. So anyway, any more? This is this works really good. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to bag the tick in a little plastic baggie if it does bite you. And if you're feeling any symptoms, you can get it tested. You don't need to test it every time if you don't want to spend the money. But um, it's, if you, it's linked on our public health nurse on mm -hmm. our website. If you go to the public health nurse, you can see the tick testing. And you can down, download the application and mail off your tick. And you get it paid for, you know, tested, and um, they take credit cards at UMass. But 
I just have to say, if you don't want to have about a third of the ticks have Lyme disease, mm -hmm. and what is most troubling is 2% is what we used to have for bacterial kind of secondary infections. It is in the last two years has gone up to over 5% here in the ticks in, in Deerfield. And um, there's now about a dozen different um, bacterial infections mm. you can get. And they make Lyme disease look like the lazy cousin. So it's yeah. very, very serious. Um, so sure. again, if you don't want to have your tick tested, um, put it in a baggie, but keep it on the shelf to make sure you don't have any symptoms. If you're getting symptoms, go get it tested. It's a turnaround of, of guaranteed three days or less from UMass, and um, then you'll know you can go to your primary doctor and get um, antibiotics. And make sure the antibiotics is not like a two-day knock down the mm. symptoms, and then they go underground and create this huge problem for yourself. Yeah, I mean the big one. Do any doctors there, prescribe antibiotics for two days? Uh, that seems to be the practice. And, um, I've never had a there's lesson a, um, in it. Emily um, Mayala, mm. up in uh, Vermont, and she has She's a, a she has a tick office yeah. in Turner's. Is a tick specialist. She is wonderful, and she will. You have to drive up to Brattleboro just here, but you can get a prescription for thirty well, days. She's actually a Lyme specialist, not a tick yes. specialist. Lyme, Lyme well, specialist. well, she's doing all the research on the ticks, yeah. and she's one of the ones that is um, really keeping an eye on the secondary bacterial infections, and. Um, what is very scary about the bacterial infections is uh, they can be transmitted in as, as short a period as 15 minutes, wow. which is really, really scary. That's fast. Yeah, because the Lyme so disease. So the tick is on in 15 minutes, you mean? Yeah. I see. Yeah, so it's pretty wow. scary. Um, the only other uh, Sleckman's uh, comment, well, I have actually two more comments. Um, June 12th and 13th here in the town hall is the ICS 100 and NIMS 700 training. Um, we're having John Taylor, who is the Shelburne uh, Fire Chief, come down and do the training for us. And we just, anyone that's interested in any training, uh, volunteers in the community, we're ramping up. We're gonna test all our plans for the in the Hard Knocks FEMA uh, drill October 19th through the 22nd, which is the scenario is a hurricane comes here on Tuesday and um, then the Harriman Dam is, real, is um, I guess, breached is the best. It collapses yeah. um, on Friday. So we have serious issues here in Deerfield. But um, that sort of falls into, um, seriously, June 1st through November 1st um, is the hurricane season. And last year was El Nino year and so we didn't have much activity that's what it means for us but this is a la nina year and uh this year so we're going to have uh on the average and it's per, um predicted to be about an average year which means 12 storms two to three major storms potentially and our peak is the end of august that's when we had um irene yeah. and um another peak is october and that's when we had terrible flooding in 2005 and 2007 so people remember um, Tropical Storm Bob and, mm -hmm. you know, the downgraded Bob and Irene and different ones we've had all over the years. So um, this is a good time to practice all yeah. our and get geared up. No doubt. Uh, there, Homeland Security, I um, just had a meeting on Tuesday, and they're doing uh, GPS training at the FERCOG, and Kevin is going to sign up as many as uh, highway guys as we can. So um, to get that. GPS training? Yes. We, um, Homeland Security, um, I, uh, we voted a couple years ago to get a GPS unit. And um, we had training. And I think only two people went from our department. But there, we, I um, requested training again. And we got, uh, it was voted. And it is going to be locally here at the FERCOG. What and am I, What am I missing? I mean. What, how what to is use it? a GPS unit? How to use it so you document how to um, you download it on the computer for all the FEMA forms. Like what you do uh, is you go out. Prior, say there's like a hurricane coming. So you, what you do is you go out and you go to all your culverts and you GPS your culverts 
and because it, it, it takes a picture with the date, time, and unit, so you can show that you had your culverts all cleaned out and they have been maintained. And then if it's washed out, you go and you take the picture and you show you that you've maintained your culverts and that, that was completely washed mm -hmm. out. And then you download it on the FEMA form and it's all done. Can you get and paid you can, to fix it? Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so um, right now it's 20, it's still 7525. The FEMA pays 75, state pays 25. Um, under Trump's budget, it was going to be 2575, which means they would only pay 25 and the state would pay 75, but they won't. So we, it is a hundred, would be a hundred percent us, but yeah, it's worth still, getting the training because there are other ways to do it. But I, I will actually be to FEMA training that week of June. So do we have so to buy I the GPS back with unit as well? No, no, no. Oh, it was they, give, well, Homeland Security they bought give it for, to us. Yeah, and teach Homeland them. Security gave it to the each town, um, uh, 101 towns, and I think 99 mm -hmm. towns participated. The only thing I want to mention, were you going to mention the opioid task force tomorrow? Oh, yes. I had it at the end. Um, I just want. The end. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yep, no, that's um, all right. Our SCEMS meeting tomorrow, uh, oversight meeting, uh, thank you to Zach for doing. Yes, thank um, you, Zach. He for... rescheduled it for 5 o'clock here and yep. not in Sunderland So at 6. So it's 5 o'clock. I think you're going to meet in the police Our, conference room. Oh. I think it's going to be this. Okay. Yeah. That's available if you need it. Okay. Okay. I'm going to be in the police conference room. Oh, you are? Okay. Never mind. So, uh, oh, it was for the... Um, Sewer. Sewer. Two, two thirty. You, you the engineers okay. for the sewer plant. Yeah. Five o'clock for skims. Six o'clock sewer study, and seven o'clock for ZBA. Oh, okay. I got it covered. Wow. You got oh. it. I don't know. Some point. Well, opioid. <laughs> the opioid. That was like <laughs> Tuesday. I had. That's what happened to me on Tuesday. Um, anyway, the opioid task force meeting is going to be here at six to eight. Yeah. A regional task force. Um, I guess that's. It for um, anything? Good. Okay. Um, is it six forty-five? We can have Cumberland Farms storage. Yep. Yep. You have the you have that and other forms in your yeah. yeah. Shall we step up? Sure. Yes. How Come are on you? up. Very well. How are you? Good. Can you introduce good. yourselves? Yes, of course. I let me get the notices. Is that a Starbucks drink? Of course. <laughs> there you Thank go. You. Sure. Different kind of green card. <laughs> uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, I'm Tom Reedy. I'm an attorney with Bacon Wilson out of Amherst here on behalf of Cumberland Farms and its application for a license to store underground flammables and combustibles. 32,000 gallons of gasoline, 8,000 gallons of diesel at the corner of Elm and Route 5 here in Deerfield. With me this evening, Phil Henry, the civil engineer. Um, we had submitted these plans. We had submitted them to the fire department and to your office. Uh, I hope that you have in your packet the sign off from the fire department. Uh, as you may know, we're proposing a 4,786 square foot retail convenience store with automobile filling stations we've been in front of and have received approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, and the Conservation Commission. You are our last uh, municipal board that we need approval from, and so we would request um, an approval of the application this evening. We're happy to answer any questions you have, of course, uh, technical or otherwise. Um, I. It's really just for us to have knowledge of it. Um, the most important thing is that we have the fire sign off. So yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah, I saw that. I don't we just verify that this fire <coughs> has been signed off. I have the original one from Bill Swayze. But they have copies of this in their packet, don't they? Yeah, I gave them copies. Okay. Okay. So it looks the same. Yes, okay. I just made them copies before the meeting. Where's the? Uh, I don't, I don't have a signature. I don't have a. There's no yeah. signature place for you. No, for no, no, for the fire department. department. Oh, it's on this one. It's on page. I can't read it, but page I two. two. Yeah, it's your third page in. The bottom. Okay. You might have the original application. Okay, that, that I don't. It's have. on. It's on this. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Oh, all right. That's fine. We just need to verify it. That's all. Of course. Uh, did Probably either one of you have any questions? No. Oh, I'm good. Okay. 
Um, I'll take that. a motion to approve this. I make a motion to approve the Cumberland Farms um, gasoline storage permit. Second. As presented, why don't we just say as Perfect. presented so Thank you can. You. Okay. Because all the information here is. Yeah, why don't we just do that? Because that you rather than read all this technical stuff. So this will be part of the yeah. motion. Is that okay? This this part. I I got yeah. the stuff. Yeah, let's see. Okay, we'll work. We'll get. It. Okay. Second. Is there any further discussion? None. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. You're Thank you more very than much. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And there's one last item you're waiting for before moving forward, or? When you say last item? Uh, the DOT stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, we need a curb cut. We're in the process. I think last month there was a roadway safety audit, yep. Um, yep. which I think members of the right. I see. perfect were part of it. Um, and we are going through that process, going through the MEPA process, waiting for comments back. And so we're hopeful to get in to the, the DOT um, process towards uh, mid-summer and hopefully get the approvals end of this year, beginning of the end of this year probably. So we'd be looking, if everything goes well, to begin construction next year. Great. Okay. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. You too. Um, we don't... Is You're Alan not. here? No, there's no. Alan's not here. Okay. Um, I was wondering if we wanted to invite. Do you want to do the? Yes. Why don't yeah, you come? We have got TV. Why don't you come up? We have TV yeah, tonight. Yeah, we have TV tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how are you guys? Hi guys. Good. Good. How are you? Good. I'm doing good. Why don't you introduce yourself and explain um, sure. what your new adventure? Um, and thank you for coming last week and. You're I'm welcome. sorry we, you. you weren't on TV last week, but um, That's fine. we are still excited that you're here, and Thank now you. you have an opportunity to be on TV. Thank okay. you so much. Uh, well, my name is Gianni Calabrese, uh, and uh, we're here in South Deerfield, very excited to open a new business, which is uh, an Italian restaurant, and it's on the former uh, Alinas, yeah. and uh, we're hoping to open up in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so I have Joe Shattuck, he's uh, in charge of the work that we are doing. I don't know if you wanna. Sure, we're just some. making some minor uh, cosmetic upgrades to um, just give the place a, a new look. Right. Um, and I think it's a reflection of Gianni's uh, personality and also um, um, just to kind of give it a, a new feel. So yeah. I think that the renovations are a good representation of you know, how his personality is, so. Definitely. Nice. Well, I'm really excited. And um, so what are your hours and, and the days uh, you're going to be open? The hours are going to be uh, Mon uh, no, wait, uh, Tuesday to Sunday. Yeah. Well, 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock, Tuesday to Thursday, yeah. and uh, 4 to 10 on Friday and Saturday. Oh, nice. Oh, great. And uh, 12 o'clock noon uh, to 8 o'clock on Sundays. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. great. Well, so we have that Monday, be nice. Monday yeah. 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 Great. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank well, you. I'm really excited, and yeah. um, thank you for coming back. Oh, you're very I'm welcome. You we are very excited as well. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Thank so you so much. Good. This is a point of information. At, at the last meeting that wasn't televised, um, we issued the common victuallers license yep. and the process that of, the, of a liquor license, which you are seeking, is kind of out of our hands at this point because the state is involved yes. with that so we don't actually know exactly when that will happen so no unfortunately it's uh we have to wait for that and uh, uh it's gonna take maybe a little, bit, a little bit of time so that's actually good that you mentioned this because we'll ask customers to be uh to patient, to not patient <laughs> yeah with that and so sure i appreciate their patience so thank you so much to, to you remind. enjoy the we are yeah. processing it though yes yeah. yes yes we are of course, so. everybody likes uh, a good wine with uh, their pasta, so um, maybe we start off with a beer and wine. Uh, yeah. Maybe we do BYOB. I'm not sure. What did you yeah. but, okay. um, we'll sort something out when you're ready. Yeah, you can yeah exactly. Just come over and oh. we'll figure it out. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Talk to Thank Wendy you. when okay. you're ready to open. And okay. Yeah. 
we'll announce that you're open and awesome. let Again, people be patient. Thanks for having us. Oh, yeah. Thank right. you sure. very much, guys. Sure. Yeah, Have a thank great you. Night. And Good welcome. Night. Thank, thank you. Welcome. We're really happy that you're in town. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't, I didn't, okay, I thought it was my um, Is anyone else from your board coming or? Okay. okay. Uh, so the, we'll just wait for Alan then, I guess. Um, when he shows up, we'll, we'll have you come yeah. up. Okay. Um, paperwork, so. First, next item on the agenda is the special one-day liquor license for DA's reunions on June 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. Um, we could just... Um, you need a motion? Yeah, I don't have them in front of me. I've got it. They're in your okay. folder. So okay. uh, I make a motion to approve the one-day liquor license for um, trustees of Deerfield Academy uh, for the dates of uh, June 8th through June 11th. Okay. So the first will be um, Thursday, June 8th from 5 p.m. to midnight at DA Dining Hall. Second is Friday, June 9th, uh, 10 a.m. to Saturday, June 10th. Um, third, fourth, or Saturday, June 10th, 10 a.m. to Sunday, June 11th um, uh, at 2 a.m. Hess Center. That was 2 p.m., I'm not sure. Um, so that's it. Have a second? Oh, it's not a one. I'll second it. It doesn't sound like a one-day license. It sounds like no, a one-weekend license. It's a weekend. <laughs> it's a weekend. Four one day. A it's multi. Four, four one Yeah, day they, they purchased four or one day. I, I guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, if there, is there any further discussion? No. no. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, just so that Zach, poor Zach, can go home. Thank you, Zach, for being here. Let's sk skip down to... Um, yeah, we have a couple things. Um, oh, Besides the new appointees, yes, uh, um, <laughs> there's also something from the personnel board which um, came in under the radar, but came in and and um, that's Zach. So you want to you want to um, Zach? Together. I'm I'm not sure. I I could have sworn that we had approved your raise. Um, we had discussion and but we're going to vote on it again. So I make the motion that we um, retroactively approve your raise as recommended by the um, oversight board and the personnel committee. And I, I'm not sure what dates those were because this was a while ago. This is in your. Um, you know what? I don't have it in my packet. Take oh, that's my head. Sorry. That's okay. Yep. Uh, Oh, okay. Um, okay, motion is made to move Zach's scams director to step seven, retro from July 1st, 2016. The board voted all in favor of said motion. Um, this was the motion made um, and done by the personnel board on April 5th. Um, so just as a point of clarification, that is at odds with the recommendation of the board of oversight? Um, which recommended a step 10 based on my performance review and a assessment of the other department heads back for um, back last um, year. I think, and this is why I could have sworn we did it because we what we did, Zach, is approve the step seven, and then when the new comp schedule com comes in, mm -hmm. the step seven would have given is going to give you the um, what the oversight board had approved. Um, I'm not sure on that, but even if that's true, that means that I'm missing the retroactive. There's a difference in retroactive pay for this oh, year that I would yeah. be missing. Maybe that's why it didn't go through. Um, so the vote of the, the recommendation from the SCEMS board was different than what the personnel board recommended. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's up. What would you like to do? Well, I... I think we need to go back and um, talk to the personnel board, but we need to approve this at least so that um, we can um, give Zach at least this step seven, I think. And we have to sort it out with the personnel board. Maybe that's why it didn't go through. It wasn't, I think since I've been here, I don't think. Well, they had that meeting, but I wasn't there. Well, one, of the, wasn't there. one of the two, there were two things that the personnel board wanted 
and which they didn't get is they didn't get your job description or your review. Uh, I don't know about the review. That would be the purview of the chairman of my board of oversight. I did provide them with a copy of my job description that was that presented. night that you were there. Yep. Well, Mary said that she didn't get either of them. So. Oh, I, I handed out just, packets. Yeah. Just give them back. Just make sure that she gets them. That might help. Them. Well, let's let's vote the recommendation. This one. Sure. And then let's we'll sort out. I think they're meeting on June nineteenth. Yes. I believe that's the next meeting. So um, let's let's do this, and then we'll sort it out. Uh, I'll have to do the. Oh, I think I have a meeting on June nineteenth. Uh, maybe. Do you think you, mm -hmm. you both of you could go on the nineteenth? Kip. To, to the personnel board. To, to the personnel. Yes, board. I would go. Yeah. Well, let okay. us know so we can post it as a yeah. meeting of the board. Both of you go. I'll know when that is. Sorry. I said I'll know when that meeting is. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's a Monday night. Uh, that's my medical I know, meeting. Brandon, I have a canary at home that goes there too. So. Oh. Oh. Okay. So we'll we'll sort it out before the end of the fiscal year. So. Okay. Um. Can you just clarify what the difference is between step, step seven, seven and step, and step 10? ten? It's. Is yeah. It, it's. Is um, it eighty cents a year? Isn't it? Or something like that? Because it's on the old comp schedule. Yeah. It's on the old clump. Clump. It's <laughs> comp schedule. Oh. Um, yeah, so the, the, the Board of Oversight, based on their review and comparable salaries of the other department heads in town, recommended 3606, um, and the recommendation from the personnel committee was 3365. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what the reasoning was for the lower amount. But. I didn't think there was that much difference between them. You were at the meeting when they voted. I was, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I voted too. I mean, I was there too. So were you I guys at that Skims meeting? I mean, I don't know. Oh well, actually, no. This is. Oh no, that's about right. Because um, it's eighty something cents, a difference, a, a step. Well, I guess that's something we can bring up tomorrow. Because I don't remember being at a meeting yeah, where well, they discussed we'll, that. It was just. Maybe it was, we, we never it was even discussed prior the, uh, to our maybe being on that board. Well, it was, yes, it was before we, this was done before no, 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 we were on the board. Yeah, the recommendation was for fiscal year 17, which started July, July 1 1st. of 27, right. 2016, 16. and the recommendation from the Board of Oversight is dated September 30th. Yeah. But we, I, I personally never saw the evaluation either, so I don't know. I know that Bob and Gary did it. That's all I know. I never heard anything more about it. Okay. So, so you know what? We'll, let's. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Can so. Can we adjust this tomorrow night? We're going to adjust this tomorrow night. Okay. I mean, well, wait, 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 I mean, wait, wait, wait. we'll no, discuss it. it. No, no, no. We're, we're not going to adjust it. Discuss it. No, I said we'll go back to discuss discuss it. address it. Talk it. Okay. Yeah. But okay. we have to Under go through tomorrow night. We have to go through June 19th, the personnel committee. And then we have to go through the select board meeting, which we can't have on the 21st because you guys need to come to another meeting that night. So we'll have to figure out, <laughs> maybe meet on the 22nd. I'm not sure. Tell them more. There's a quizzical look on Kip's face. Yes. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm getting bad as your wife. I'm just telling you, you gotta show up. This is what you're doing. <laughs> but for what? I, mean, I got the 19th. You'll find out when you get there. <laughs> no, the 21st is, we had originally scheduled a selectman's meeting on the 21st, okay. but that is a MAPCO annual um, meeting. Right. And that era, you are a board of health, so you need to show up to the annual meeting. Gotcha. The map go is that the one that Mohawk Area Public Health, Public health Coalition. Oh, Jesus. And that's the twenty first. You said. Yeah. Okay. I mean, if you're feeling okay. What? what I mean, yeah, I'm only right. giving what you time? a hard time. Um, and it's, does the um, ambulance respond to tick bites? Oh, it's <laughs> if you call, I think we'll it's always show up. Yeah. Six to eight. Is it up at Greenfield oh, again? Greenfield. Yeah. Okay. Country Greenfield. Club? Yep. Okay. Um, so. Zach, anyway, I'm sorry about that. So, okay. So we'll sort that out. The, as approved was for the recommendation of the personnel committee, but you're going to go back and see if some understanding can so, be made between. But in the between. meantime, in the meantime, you're going to get your raise to step seven. Okay. Okay. But just and, try to make sure that Mary, I think Mary's a chair, gets that yes. job description and the I, I've supplied I it really, multiple times I, and I will Zach, supply I actually, it again. I, in your defense, well, I physically carried it over to the box myself one time. 
we, it's it's been trying it's been uh, three times at least because I, I did one time ask Zach he did it okay and I did and it then one we time. brought it and in then hand it at the again. last meeting that they voted yeah. on yep and I, I think it's okay. been it's it has evaluation as well I, the I don't have a copy that the it would be uh, Bob Ahern from or a representative from the Board of me. Oversight to yeah, yeah to just ask him to send up the Mary or to be aware so, so we'll, we'll sort it out. Okay, okay, don't go anywhere because um, we want to do your appointments. Um, that's really wonderful. I want to say congratulations to Eric Drumgold for yeah. um, getting his yeah. certification as a paramedic. It's Great wonderful. So, Zach, why don't you tell us about um, the great... Um, yeah, so this is... Uh, I'm just requesting three appointments for per diem paramedics. One of them is an existing, he was an EMT with Deerfield EMS long before South County EMS. He's a local EMT. He's since gone to paramedic school, that two and a half year process, tested with the state national registry, and he's now a paramedic. So, wow. which one? Uh, Great job. Uh, Eric Drumble. Uh, yeah, it's, it, it's fantastic to, to see him grow in his career with us. And so to facilitate that and get him trained and oriented with us and be able to work as a paramedic. Um, this is this is what we need to do. We need to, to appoint him as a paramedic, sure. so um, he's covered and, and can work as that. Uh, the other two people on this list, uh, Carly Eaton and uh, Brian Peralt, uh, they're both paramedics, uh, experienced paramedics, highly recommended, uh, who are excited to be per diem with us as well. And this is to cover the shifts that mm -hmm. you know we have because of vacation or sick time or training or yep. or just the holes in our schedule. And uh, Brian actually was one of the finalists for the last full-time slot and unfortunately I didn't have an extra full-time slot to offer him but yep. um, he's he's enthusiastic about working here in any capacity he can so that's great yeah so this wonderful Zach uh, it's, it's great that we have wonderful call staff mm -hmm. again okay I, I would make a motion to um, approve um, all three as per deal to the South County EMS I'll, I'll second the motion is there any further discussion no, no. hearing none all those in favor aye aye and that's um, grade three, step three. Do you want to approve rubber stamping these, or do you want to sign them? No, we'll just we'll just sign them. So, um, their appointment paper should be. It's nicer to be hand signed. Okay, thank you, Zach. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow night. Yes, yes. you will. Um, the Franklin Land Trust is here with the fire district. Would you all come up? Welcome. Hi. How are you? Good. good. How are you? Good, Hi. good. Hi there. So, um, I'm, I know Carolyn, how are you? I'm good. Elaine <laughs> Peroy from the Franklin Land Trust. And um, why don't you guys introduce yourselves? So, I'm Dawn Travellini from National Grid. Okay. He's, I hear him shouting, Mike, if you could. I'm so sorry. Oh, use the, the mic. If the mic. Oh, oh yes. yeah. I'm sorry. Do you need her to start over? Yes. Sure. yes. I, I, know. Over. I, I think it's fine. Okay. This thing is heavy. It is. <laughs> Elaine Peteroy from the Franklin Land Trust. Don Travellini from, uh, from National Grid. Uh, Paul Kanapik from BSC Group. And Brian Nardowitz from uh, Deerfield Fire District. Hi, Brian. Okay. And then we should just leave it because it makes a lot of noise. Okay. Me. So that's a good place. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I am here. It's kind of a multi, multi part um, project, which I'm going to let Paul describe and our part of it. Then we can talk about the conservation restriction. But Paul is a consultant who's lead putting together the project. Or John, sure. whoever wants to describe. I tried to explain it a little bit to Kip, so he was confused. So yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> so this came about um, driven by the need to provide off-site uh, mitigation for impacts to water resources um, from a project the National Grid did last year in Greenfield and Montague. Uh, we looked in those municipalities, Thank obviously, you. for any suitable uh, projects or, or locations or. Um, uh, opportunities to provide mitigation for, for the impacts as a result of the project and um, one of the first areas that we looked at was uh, property that was owned by New England Power uh, a subsidiary of National Grid. Uh, New England Power has a lot of excess properties mainly from the uh, former generation side of the company um, and a lot of these 
uh, properties are located adjacent to the Deerfield River, um, you know, because of the hydro uh, uh, need at the time. And this particular parcel, it's about a 12-acre parcel uh, on Stillwater Road. Uh, you might know the area pretty well. It's right near the bridge where they, uh, I think, take out for tubing uh, down the river. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also adjacent, directly abutting uh, the Deerfield Water District property uh, in the back. So we went through, went through many months of um, negotiations with both the Army Corps of Engineers and the, the Mass DEP Western Region. Um, and we basically came up with this project. And, and the project is giving uh, the 12 acres of land to the Water District that would add to the already um, large parcel that's there. I think their acreage is about 39 acres, so this adds 12 to that. Um, and there was another um, kind of an enhancement component to it in that um, we daylighted a stream on the Water District property uh, to provide, you know, basically a, um, an enhancement to the resources that are there in addition to um, providing the property that would then be preserved and it would serve as, um, uh, you know, properties that would be under watershed protection essentially. So as part of this process, because National or New England Power is the owner, um, they really can't hold uh, the property. So the thought was we, we give it to the Water District, and because of the requirements uh, by the regulatory community, we had to have a mechanism to ensure that the, the property would be preserved in a certain state. And that's where the conservation restriction uh, came in, in that the conservation restriction was developed in cooperation with the Franklin Land Trust. They will hold that CR on the property that would be owned by the uh, water district. And so the, the conservation restriction has gone through a review, obviously by attorneys at National Grid and um, um, with the water district and with the Franklin Land Trust. It's been to the state um, uh, Division of Ecological Resources or? Uh, Division of Conservation Cons Services. Sorry. Yeah. Um, where uh, they, they're kind of the, um, uh, the, the reviewer of these CRs, ensuring that their language is appropriate and they're held in a certain uh, commitment that you're, you're saying it will be held. And so tonight is part of this process. Um, you know, you're required to endorse, you know, this, this CR essentially. Um, and and as a legal mechanism to, uh, to hold it. When you I say required. Well, so the, Frank, so the um, any, any conservation restriction in the state of Massachusetts has to go through a um, review process with um, the select board um, and get signed off on by the select board. Um, and so this restriction is based on a template from the state, Division of Conservation Services. They have attorneys that have developed this, and we've done this quite, um, quite often in, in Deerfield. And so it's been all reviewed. It's, it's reviewed by our attorneys. Our board has voted on it. And so then we you know, come to the select board and ask that you would um, vote to support this um, for conservation purposes. And the statute that, that outlines conservation restrictions requires that the selectmen need to sign the restrictions. We will also meet with the Conservation Commission um, just to get what's called a municipal certification. It's part of the process. We can we turn it in normally later, but the timing of getting on the agenda here is that we got the select board first, and then we'll meet with the CONSCOM. Um, they attest really to the public benefit, and I think, you know, given the location and its proximity to the to the um, to the river mm -hmm. and next to water district land, um, and also having some some biomap and important, you know natural heritage color on it simply because it's near the river would, would be an easy um, one. So. I'll just ask the standard question. Yeah. Um, what are your plans for uh, monitoring the stewardship right. of the land? Yeah, so our um, stewardship staff has already um, done the baseline report on it, so we've taken all the pictures of the property. It's been surveyed. They actually have also done some um, invasive species control on it as yep. part of the project, so that's kind of a really added benefit, and we go out there once a year and monitor the land. We know it's a it's a it's a spot that likes to be visited, mm -hmm. um, and so we might be going there more than once a year just to check on it. And I think um, you can probably attest you'll be out there, kind of keeping an eye on things as the landowners. Um, 
I know Brian's good about that. Yeah. Um, and it's gated now. I think yes. you put, they also put gates Two on gates it up. to yeah. help with the protection. There's an access road to get in. I saw the gate. On the it's kind of an in and an out. It, it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a loop. A loop. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And this is across from Stillwater Bridge it and is, then yeah. up the hillside yeah. there. Yes. Right? Okay. They gated it so it would limit access because people mainly are going, vehicle access. Yeah. Yeah. People I mean, are going it wasn't up there and really partying. a problem. Uh, yeah. It seemed, but you know, they, there was a popular there's a popular parking lot down across the street and just at to, the bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Well, what what happens? People were driving up there and then. Party. I see. Yeah. So it's it was good to gate it. It's so great. there's ask, access if necessary, but Where, can you show me where the access is on this? Um here's the water bridge, yep. right? Yep, yep. Okay, so does, see this does little the power little, company currently pay like taxes on this land? If you, goes up to yeah, the yes. so across the parking lot here. There's mm -hmm. like a little gate. And that's the access, access kind of here. Yeah, that's that little access road. Like yep. a little gate there. Okay. And then it's just And this is just wet hand. Yeah, right? and so when you drive up you know, instead of going like Brian, down to the town you told me that this will yep. protect yep. You go, you go up this the water right. supply. Um, right. Stillwater yeah. Springs is located uh, adjacent to that parcel. It's on the hill. Um, we, we initially wanted to do exploration for another water supply, but that was shot down. Um, that's Why? By Why? the group. What group? Um, so we had an idea of putting a test well up top, a test well down the bottom, but that it's in the literature, it's it's written as non explorable. Oh, you can't. On the 12 acres, the 39 oh, yeah. acres is still open to whatever uh, right. further exploration. So, you, you want to basically give this land to the water district. Well, here it says fire district, they're the same, I guess. Yeah, right? fire yeah the fire district is the water district. And, mm -hmm. and you're not getting paid for it, but yet. Who's putting the restriction that they can't explore for water? The part of giving it, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, is for the mitigation project that it be preserved for conservation. Um, for it what? is just as it's well. It's an as offset for impact, so you can't. But if you can't get water for people to drink, I mean, who, who, who are we saving it for? Well, it's for around the zone the water of, supply that's there. of the water supply that's already there. So most and water it, supplies have zones. One thing that should be it's within noted here, this, this is property that wasn't owned by the water district to begin yeah. with. Sure. And right. so they, right. they had no legal right to explore oh, I understand on that. this property. They but do have rights in the 39 acres. Well is within the zone I, I understand one. that. But I'm saying that these, the power company pays taxes on this land. They want to use this as a chip to offset work they've done somewhere else, so they're giving it, but yet they're putting restrictions on it. And I don't understand that. A conservation, they're putting a conservation restriction saying it can't be developed. Right. So there were you, conservation you, you consider, impacts I mean, as a result of the project. I'm not saying it's you people. Those impacts. I'm not saying it's you people. Yeah. So somebody's saying drilling a well for a wa domestic water is a development? Well, All the, they're saying is that that wouldn't be in keeping with the conservation restriction that we're required to hold. But you can't do it anyway because um, it's within zone one of the of the wellhead. There's already a well, right? I mean, Brian, oh. isn't that right next to it's the springs. existing spring? Springs. Yeah. So, yeah. why? I, I guess my question, because I'm new to the whole water service industry, but why would you not just use the land you have to put a well, and this would be like your protective zone area? Well, around. it's it's actually too soupy in that area where the springs are. They're just going all willy nilly water everywhere mm -hmm. in there. It's it's contaminated. But, it's uh, contaminated with with Giardia and crypto. Right. But a well would be deeper than the surface supply. Yeah. Is there. Yeah. The flat plateau would have been a perfect spot. Um, but I mean, again, there's as part of what we did, we provided access to that back property. I mean, there was access there, but it wasn't very improved. What we did was daylighted a stream, basically removed a very small culvert, and put a larger one in. So now there's vehicle access to the back. <laughs> part of that spring box system. Again, areas of upland similar. and wetland that could be, you know, used for, you know, if you're gonna find water here, you're gonna find it in the back area too. I um, know. Uh, it doesn't, I mean, the, the basic thing is it's being preserved and that's good. It's being preserved and, yeah. And that impact, that's a positive impact on the, on the fire district. 
I would say that's a positive impact on the fire district. I would, and not knowing enough about water supply that if, if they ever figure out, you know, if there's ever an opportunity to, on, with on the 39 acres to, to drill or explore on that, this is adding to that buffer of, of the it zone is. two one. buffer or what? One. One. Zone, one. zone one area because it's so close. Feet. So yeah. it is adding to it. it. It could have been a house. You know, could have been five, five, five lots. Right. So I mean, it. You know, did know. we not do a conservation restriction with the allowance of drilling a well? No, we did a conservation restriction to leave it the way it is, and you know, it definitely would have had a town. negative impact to have septic systems up there. Right. So it's a positive thing from the water district's point of view. Well, I make a motion that we. Um, Dick has a question. Oh yes, Dick. Right here. Come on up. Yep. All these are right here. Dick. I didn't get it beforehand. It's um, not Dick. We would when you get first. when you get to the bottom of the Stillwater Bridge, you did turn you, right. Did you send the property as you Because I asked you for documents. You said you're bringing them. Um, so I, oh yeah. No. Well, I said I'm digital. Kuzik is where the when where you, the property is. A week ago. Or two okay. so yeah. Right here. The reason I'm asking Sorry. is that, as you well know. We had a considerable problem with the wells in that area that I was involved with the DEP for two years trying to fix contaminated wells, okay? And what I'm concerned about is that it's restricting this from the water rights, so to speak, I don't think is in the best interest of the town because we have potential problems headed in the other direction and possibly could be headed to our still water well. And I think we have monitoring wells all over the place and I'm a little concerned that we take a land and lock 39 it, acres. Lock it up. No, it's yeah. not the 39 acres. No, it's the 12 the acres. It's 12 acres. Dick, look, I, I, they, they, could, they could drill wells all up here. And the, and the good thing is there's no septic systems that would back into the 39 acres. Well, because if if I'm you just concern, you're going to take a piece of land for conservation, and it seems pretty silly to me to not allow water to be taken off of that property when we have a water problem in the whole town. We have no backup supply for South Deerfield water. We have no backup. Correct me if I'm wrong. We have an interconnection. We have an interconnection. We have it. we have no real source of backup, and I just think it needs a little more thought before doing the water restriction. Could we give it a month? Sure. I, I guess I'm curious. I'm, yeah. I'm curious. I, th just I, thought, on, I'm I thought we couldn't too. do it because it's in zone one anyway. Well, that's what I'm curious about. So if, I mean, 12 acres, it's not very big. And if you're saying that your 39 acres where the springs are, are contaminated, how is the 12 acres that's literally Well, if you were going to do a deep well, it doesn't matter. That's surface contaminant. That's surface water. That's why well, it's I contaminated. Guess that's, but that's what Paul was saying, is yeah, why so wouldn't you just drill somewhere on those 39, 39 acres, maybe not where it's just wet and soggy? And well, it seems like you would do it in this upper corner here. Okay. There's another reason for that. Why? The aquifer distance is almost unknown, correct me if I'm wrong, because we have drilled that well, and as you well know, we paid a pretty price. To correct the problem, and that well is at 100 feet, non-contaminated. Oh, Dick, but this isn't this isn't by Mark Gilmore's it's property. It's still the clay layer. You go to 100 feet of clay. Oh, okay. Clay layer. Yeah. And we're not sure how much water supply. And Brian, please step in if I'm wrong. We're not sure how great our water supply is. We have a bigger population in Old Deerfield sucking off that water supply than you do in South Deerfield almost because of the schools. Um, do you think, um, you, just, Brian, do you think, would DEP do a waiver for um, the well, a, a new well within look, the with zone any, one? With any CR, I mean, it's, it's intended to be in perpetuity. There is a mechanism, albeit, you know, a legal mechanism to remove a portion of this property thereof from conservation purposes, if there is, you know, an overriding need, which a water supply would serve, surely, you know, be that need. Um, 
You'd have to go through DEP though, right? You'd have to go through the yes. DEP. You'd have to go I through the five, five, five years. You'd to have to get go the waiver. The I don't know of a time yeah. frame. You'd well, have to get the zone, zone one. To permit, to permit a well, you mean? To, to test, to permit, to. Yeah, so to that's a separate process from removing yeah. a portion of the site from the conservation restriction. Right? Remember, as a word of caution from the DEP, I was required to go to every single house in that old Deerfield district uh -huh. and check whether they had a private well or not and order them to discontinue the use of it. I, okay. I remember. So I'm just concerned about restrictions. Well, look, um, if I can suggest and step in, because obviously I, you know, I, in all this, we've been working on this for over like a year and a half. I was yes. not aware that these 12 acres was like, we have to have a well here. I knew that. Well, I, anything is precious. I, I totally these understand days. Anything that. Anything is precious when I, it comes to water supply. I totally get that. I just didn't. Yep. And that's why I thought that conserving it because it's in a zone and so close to the springs was a really great thing. That's why we got involved in it. The idea that this would be the well site, um, from our perspective, it's fine with us. It's really a matter of what the power company can do and what the mitigation rules are. We are working now where we would, in a different example, but where we are going to retain a right-of-way or an easement mm -hmm basically for a future well site in on, the, on another property. Um, and that is certainly something that we can consider. I, it's fine with the Franklin Land Trust to do that. It's more just now so, the timing right. of it. I think, I think if we were to remove that caveat in the... In the um, we tried that. We, we started there. We'll go back a year. We started yeah. with that provision that it, that would be allowed under the CR. And it was very quickly shot the down by the company. regulatory agencies right. that they're, they're not what preserving. Agent, that's what I was trying to get. Who yeah. made that rule yeah. and who says no? That was the Army Corps of Engineers yes. and that was the DEP. Right. The DEP waterways, not water supply, but a different division of the DEP. Their only focus was looking at the project we had and what mitigation we were providing for that project. And a developed property, maybe in part, but a developed property for water supply wouldn't qualify us for this mitigation, all right? Well, Again, not to say that this, that restriction in part couldn't be removed sometime in the future right. if there was an impending need for water supply in the town. But to say, well, we really wanted this, for one thing, it's property that's not even held by the town right now. It's held by New England Power. And it's not like you have a, a taking authority right. for a water supply. I, I'd like to say that you do, but you know they could easily sell it tomorrow, have it developed into five house lots, and then you'd have five residences up there with still a water supply issue. This at least provides, you know, undeveloped land that could, through legal mechanisms, maybe in part be removed for water supply purposes. I, maybe I'm just not getting this, yeah. but the land trust can <clears throat> provide or take out an easement <clears throat> for right away, but yet. Again, that's written into the CR up front. Right? Well, That's, why can't right. you write into the CR up front? Well, right now they the have roads that go to the back property. They can yeah. go through the gate, drive yeah. up, you know, and actually go through access to this property to get to the back 39 acres using right. the roads that are already there. Written into the CR is that those roads can be maintained, all right? Mm -hmm. Those roads are there. They're going to be maintained. We put a, a new box culvert in just for that purpose, to maintain access to the back of that property. But it's part of the mitigation it and is. the permit. I think is what you're saying is that the development, which would be a well, is yep. considered a development, is not allowed. Correct. So whether we're For okay with program. that, yes, but through right. So, so you guys need to accomplish. Right. We don't. We can't. We would be. Yeah. It would. It would not pass. We we right. tried it very early and it was shot down. So, but this what this does give the water district is access to it and additional buffer on the 39 acres that they already own that contain the spring. So if and when they're ever, you know, it's, it's keeping that land clean and if and when they ever were able to test and maybe put the well on the 39 acres that they own, this is adding to their zone one of a drilled well. Um, when you had the CR of, of the one that you're working on? Yeah. Um, was that done at the same time that you signed the CR, or is this was the way we're doing that? Is we are taking that right away and getting and putting it down before we do the CR. Okay. We don't 
I would never recommend that we sign a CR with any thought to amend it to later add it, it because that would decrease the you know the conservation value of the CR. It, so you wouldn't be able you wouldn't be allowed to amend the CR to add a well site. So you'd have to put this on underneath, which if it wasn't part of this permit and everything and it was just a project, we'd be fine with. But it sound, it's really the, the, the mechanism of why they're protecting this is because they need to conserve it without. Right. You needed to find a spot to be able to offset what you're doing somewhere else, right? Is that yeah, the, yeah, that was, was Montague, really, the word. I mean, it, it's preserving an area that, you know, functionally and, you know, from a value standpoint, could be developed, equivalent but to the impacts that were impaired on elsewhere. And could have been developed, right? Could have been developed, so you're, you're, you're finding a place right, to, yeah, right. to find it. Well, Brian, what do you want to do? <laughs> do you want us to wait on yeah, this? I, I would request a month. Okay. I, I'd like to make a suggestion that we contact, I believe, Weston and Sampson, who does our well monitoring for leachate from our landfill, get a map, and the select board review that map and look at these properties and location and kind of say, what if? Because I tell you right now, if you think about this, the 91 bridges are right by our pump station for Old Deerfield. The tanker truck tipping over and dumping fuel oil onto the river, we're done. Well, we had okay, a problem so well, with Irene. At with Irene, there was problems. I know. I guess I'm so, still confused. The long story short, we've been yeah. through a process. We're at the very tail end of that process. When we've if been we don't the give this to the, land the, uh, the water company, it may go to another entity who then, you know, the, the land trust will hold the CER, will we'll seek your endorsement still, but the land may be owned by someone else, a another third party. NGO. Yeah. I mean, we're, we can't change that. We really can't. Um, and we've again, been through there the is a potential. With the water district. Yes. I mean, the did commission your, was okay with this last year. Did your board vote for this, Brian? We okayed it. We have never signed anything on it. But you voted, but you okayed right? on it. Yes, yeah. okayed it. the draft CR. Right. What I'm saying is we're, we'll accept it, but it's, it's under a guise of we cannot use it for water supply exploration. It's still well, providing a benefit before. to protecting the water supply. I mean, that's what I'm, right, what and I'm you couldn't before, Brian. Is, well, I'm wondering, yeah, how would we ever be able to use it in the future, anyways, if no, if we don't own it? Right, right. That's um, the key. But that's my concern. Is it domain? I hate those words, but that's the truth. Is that what you're I, saying? I, mean, I you, can't cite you, you a chapter a and show why. That, that but, parcel there will provide the supply that you need. That's there, why you do a yeah. test well. And you just explore. You do a test well. You could do a test well. I, I, I tell you what, it, does it matter if we wait till the May 31st meeting for you? As Does it impact your deal at all? No, I mean, this has been going on for several months. Yeah. We really okay. hope to. I think we need some clarification on this, mm -hmm. um, only because I think there's a further complication. I'm, I'm just remembering because you know we're working on the Shelburne Buckland um, wells and the coal rain wells. Um, repair work the Franklin right. um, Conservation District is and there's all that uh, business in the zone one right. around the wellhead so um, we might not even be able to use this as a well because you're in this well field I mean you're in the zone one anyway so um, I think it would be better I mean I'm just I don't remember all the regulations but we, we were just hassling, as a conservation district, we were hassling with DEP, right. and we're going through all the paperwork, as you know, um, to get you to take over the property so we can do the project and fix the wells. Yeah. So um, I, I, I am vague, vaguely remember something that you can't drill within the zone one, right, Brian? Well, no, where you drill creates a zone one. Right, right but this is, isn't this in your zone one of the... Of Where your other, of your other, right? Zone, zone one here on the buffer zone. Right, and right. so you Two can't have another can wellhead. Right. Uh, okay, I, I'm. <laughs> let's let's just put it off till May 31st, if that's okay with you. I'm just wondering. And, and we'll we... just clarify that okay. we get the commissioners because the commissioners aren't here, so we'll sort this out with the commissioners um, to make sure that they're okay, and uh, with Brian and. I mean, I, I do have to I know. let you know. I mean, it, it has to happen. 
it'll go to an entity, whether it goes to the water district or another entity, where that we've made commitments to regulatory agencies under the permits that we've got for a project that has already been constructed. Completed. And you know they've been seeking. I mean, we've well, been they've and, been patient and with I, us. And I, 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 yep. I absolutely understand. And I, but I would like to hear from the commissioners. Understood. Um, do they want us to let it to go, or do they want us to sign it? That's, and, and that's I, the and, question. And it's a hard, it's hard for Brian because he's you know works for the commissioners. He's not an actual board of commissioners. So, um, it, it, if you don't mind no, coming just, out to the May thirty first meeting, or May thirty first, and Brian will work on trying to sort this out. So, yeah, we'll Paul, can you just Dick. explain just one more time why, because we had known about this and you had gone back, is is it? why this was not allowed in from DEP's perspective and it, it's all about the permit and it not looking like it was completely that mitigation was yeah I, I have to say it. the main protagonist with shooting down that idea was the Army Corps of Engineers they regulate wet, wetlands through section 404 of the Clean Water Act and I think DEP was probably looking at maybe a broader um, vision of what what this is protecting and that maybe water supply which is one of the functions provided you know and that they protect this use could be allowed but the, the army corps essentially said no. see I, I, it would be my understanding that you could get a waiver and so yeah it's not as simple as a waiver i, I don't want to paint a don't want to picture see, because no. there's a process to take a portion of land or the whole parcel out of the cr you know it is cumbersome for a reason you know, it's held. Oh, for taking it out of the CR, no. No, 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 no. I, I wasn't mean, going to take it out of the CR, but get a waiver, to like, get, oh. get a waiver to, to well. drill the well. Um, and well. that's D, yeah. the D, the DEP that you need to talk to is the water people yeah. versus water resources, not the uh, wetlands. Right. There's a different section of DEP. Again, I think you know the the, D, the DEP was generally supportive to allow for you know a well site for the even held under a CR. You know, I I, um, I have Kathy uh, Skiba's phone number, so yeah. I, I think I'll let me just call her okay. and get some clarification. So and then we can sort this out between now and the thirty first. Can okay. I ask a clarifying question? Has this been discussed can, can, by your board before? Do you, no. Were you aware of this? No. I see this as a communication issue. I, I yeah, first became I mean, aware of it a week or week well, and a half ago. I mean, that's yeah, just, but usually it's not an issue. How, Right. Well, if it was going to eventually come to us, it would have been good. Brian sent me the information. I said, "What? What is this?" And well, I sent the whole email when I asked. Right, but I asked what it what it is, and it's it's, it's so okay. Cool. We've been working together for years, like like thirty okay, years. But but I you didn't know. communicate to her. I know, no, but I meant I know. No, I know. What she I was think asking. they're a great organization. I understand all this, but we didn't know. What I'm saying is, to close the loop on this. If it was going to come to us. Yeah. Could have done some more preparatory information and not taken up so much time tonight, and maybe, and worked with the water district and understood. You know, that's all I'm saying. Just a better flow of communication. Well, we'll 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 talk about it, uh, and I'll, I will get some clarification from Kathy um, Skiba down at DEP. Can I ask a question or make a recommendation? Um, one of the, the things I hear is that the water district is thinking, oh, we could have a well here. Um, in the future, and my thing to consider would be, have we looked at that property in the past saying we wish we had that for a well, or is it just because this is coming into play we're now thinking we can have that as a water I, I, I don't think that, I mean, we, uh, there's no commissioners here, so. Right, right. But that's just yeah. what I would throw yeah. out to be thinking of the process because right. to me as a resident, it sounds like a good idea to go forward as the way it is now. Oh, it's definitely yeah. better than having yeah. potentially yeah. five yeah. five house lots it's good and a septic way. system definitely. up up yeah. up yeah. land from your wells. I, I, and that's why we wanted to do this. Yeah. Right? It's, yeah. it's a good buffer zone right. for the zone one. Yeah. Right. We don't want it developed. It's a good right. environmental conservation thing to do. It's a sure. beautiful piece of land. It is. So um, that's why we look, and it's still it's in the Connecticut River watershed still too, yeah. oh, which yeah. is Deerfield. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Deerfield River. Sorry, I was getting yes. confused. <laughs> no, but it it's is in the Connecticut. Watershed, the so Deerfield is part of the Connecticut. Yep. So, um, but yeah, and just when you speak to the commissioners, make sure again, though we've had discussions with them that if it doesn't go to them, it's, it's gonna go going to somebody. to somebody else. So, right. but it still would be protected no matter who it works to. Yes. 
but it would be owned by another entity. We're at the it very wouldn't end be owned by your water district. The CR. the CR has been approved by the state. This is the last phase. It's been a year and a half process. process. Yeah. So. Well. Okay. Let's let's do it for May 31st. Yep. We'll decide what's going on. Okay. How's that? okay. Um, my suggestion, and I'd like the reason I'm having this input. I'd like to see the board more informed on what this is before you make a decision. And I really think you need to get the map of the area showing the wells, the monitoring wells from the leachate and all of that and look at it and then look at this parcel to make an intelligent decision. The colored photos are nice, but I bet anyone on watching this on TV doesn't have a clue where it is, okay? Yep. To talk about five house lots, anybody can talk about anything. It doesn't mean it's gonna pass a first test for septic system. Doesn't mean they can do anything with it. Doesn't mean it'll pass a subdivision bylaws. Okay? I'm more concerned that the selectmen be better informed and look at this map and look at the whole picture. We spent many, many dollars in the past making mistakes. And that's all I'm saying is delay a couple of weeks or Brian's month so you have an opportunity to review this before a meeting. Um, we'll make a um, put it on the agenda for May 31st. Okay. Is that all right? And that will hopefully that fit your will that frame? fit your time frame? They will make okay, it. Okay, that will give us time to talk to DEP and the sure. co commissioners. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's any questions, I'll leave yeah. my oh, please. Yeah. Yeah. please, please. Let um, let Wendy have your contact information. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Um, Brian, why don't you um, let the commissioners know that we would like to discuss this with them? Okay. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we just have a couple more things. Um, the, we have a COLA uh, recommendation from the personnel board mm -hmm. um, for um, Mike Phillips, who is, at, um, well, fortunately for us, um, we've had him for a long time, yes, a long have. time, wonderful employee. Um, so he doesn't fit our scale. So um, I'll make a motion to accept the personnel's board recommendation. Second. For the 1.7% COLA. Second. Is there any further discussion? Well, yes. Oh. Yes. Uh, I don't have a problem with this. The only issue is that I understand how this all came about, but how do we prevent, you know, somebody else coming forward and say, well, you know, they got a certain percent raise and I was only at 1%, so, you know, I should get one or so. You know, I don't, I, I think that it's kind of a, this should have been worked out ahead of time. I think he, we've he's, been working on this, um, and yeah, it was, and, it, and we couldn't do this until we adopted the comp I think schedule at um, town meeting. And, and Mike, since he's been here for 34 years, yeah. he's there's and no way like he can I said, fit. I, I have no, yeah. I have no problem with doing it. It's just that's this is one of the exact yeah. issues that I had with the compensation schedule. Right. And you know the other thing that is a little irritating to me too is that. We, are, we pay people to mow our cemeteries as much, if not more, than we pay paramedics who can save people's lives. And that, that whole comp schedule, I mean, you know, this is just another example of its failure to, to meet, you know, the qualification, not meet, but to accurately compensate people because we try to fit people into these little corrals. You know, you, you fit into here, so you get paid this, you fit into here. And I really think that we need to, you know, continue to look at that and pay people on their ability and their qualifications, not just what little box that they fit in. I, I'm not disagreeing, but the only problem is I, we work wicked hard on I, that. I, I, and I there understand. Really, there so wasn't, I there wasn't another solution. Yeah. I, so I, I think, understand. But yeah. I, I just, I just wanted I to get you. my two P's in there. So it's good. I know. Anyways, I'm fine. I'm done with my discussion. So <laughs> I, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, we have the animal shelter um, yep. agreement. Uh, we we do this yearly, right? Yeah. Uh, well, I think it's like a three-year one. Because I remember. Or maybe doing it is yearly. Yeah, maybe it is yearly. Actually, it is yearly. Yeah. Um, okay. This is the one. No, it's the. Um, we have the. Uh, our oh. animal control officer with Greenfield That's is three different. years. Yes. This yes, is yes. the animal. 
kennel yep. um, that is um, with the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. And we pay $800, and that allows us, Excellent. our animal um, control officer, to take dogs up there. And believe me, do it's, we, it's very cheap. Do we, um, do we utilize this? Uh, Just not knowing yes. what the history is of... Yeah, I can't tell you. Do you know offhand how many times Colleen brings up dogs up there every week? It's a couple oh, it's times often. a week. Okay. Two, three a week at least. Wow. Sometimes four or five. Yeah. Okay. He's come down here and had like three dogs in one day that he's taken away. Wow. Yeah. See, the problem is, you know, uh, you know, on a beautiful day, it's not a, there. yeah, it's not a bad thing, but we, we have no facility that um, you heat can heat or air condition and to hang on to a dog and it's not time. appropriate and then someone there was no one to take care of the dog and so 800 bucks a year gotcha. to participate is cheap we, and, we and other somebody other towns to feed the dogs water and take care of them. every we, time we have a dog we used to have the dog kennel right out back here right yeah. but we ripped it down because it was it was costing us a lot of well, money our guy that did it passed away yeah and he well, took care of it all the time he was dedicated, but, but it, it was, it was, we tried, I don't know, it was a while ago, but we tried to do it for a okay. while and it just that's, is too costly. It so is I, a it bargain. Is, I mean, I know, I, I, <clears throat> I paid $75 to keep my dog in the hotel out back one night, so. <laughs> <laughs> well. So I make a motion to um, approve the agreement between the Franklin County Sheriff's Office and the Town of Deerfield for Regional Dog Control Services. I'll second the motion. Thank All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, can you just hand that to Pat? Sure can. Make sure we do that. Um, uh, what do you have zoning? Are you here for zoning amendments? No, I'm here for the church. Yes. Okay. Then um, I don't know what the zoning amendments are. I don't Does know anyone? The either, after the planning board. There's nothing on there right now. Okay. I don't think. Um, you, are we going to need to talk about the pot shop, pot rules? Okay. You don't want, not today? Okay. We have a sewer commitment that needs to be approved. Okay. We're, we're kind of in limbo right now. We haven't had any response from the planning board. Okay. Um, oh, this is the, the next commitment. Do you want to make a motion to accept this for the, the uh, next, next year or the next section building? Um, I make a motion to accept the second uh, part of the 2017 utility uh, sewer bills. Is that correct? Uh, is, it, is it commitment, the second commitment or the commitment to? It doesn't matter. Commitment, second commitment, yeah. commitment to yeah. the second half. All right. Yeah. This just allows her to send out a bill. Gotcha. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, I think we'll we'll adjourn to adjourn to. Um, our executive session, um, except I just wanted to um, follow up on that building committee that Kip had um, suggested for Frontier. Were you going to um, volunteer from, uh, for us? <laughs> and then um, could we then say that we were going to get the send, make sure Wendy contacts the other town? I, I have no problem with her doing that. I, I really kind of wa want to reach out and just uh, make some phone calls and talk with them okay. one on one. And no. if, it can, if it progresses from then, then I'll have her. Get okay. If you don't mind. No, that's Trevor. perfect. That's okay fine. Yeah, please. Did you just um, say my name? I what? did. Well, I didn't, I missed that part. No, no, okay. no. Oh. Um, I, didn't, I didn't commit you to anything. <laughs> can you um, uncommit me? <laughs> I just did. I said oh, I was going to do it. it. Oh. You just dodged a dump truck. Okay. Um, <laughs> don't give Kip a heart attack. <laughs> um, M, the MVP grant, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grant, is going to go out tomorrow. Um, Wendy's gonna, just waiting for a signed letter. 
Um, so that will be good. Um, hopefully we'll get it. Um, we're not going to do the Lincoln Institute. Just not enough time. Gotcha. Um, and the only other thing before we go into executive session is we just need to um, talk about when we're going to meet in June. And I just want to say that the ad went into the Greenfield Recorder, or the Recorder, although I saw an article that they're talking about calling it the Greenfield Recorder again. Yeah, cool. I support what was that. It called? Back to being the Greenfield hey, Recorder. Well, yeah. It's been just the Recorder for, I don't know, 15 years or so. Oh, really? Yeah. So but see, nobody knows. <laughs> so, any rate, and the Gazette, and um, also various other places, and I'm getting applications for the position, the executive assistant position. And if people are listening, we have an opening. Oh. Oh, um, I don't. No, that's I next, didn't. next Wednesday. Oh, is and it? I'm not here oh, that's that. right. But I wasn't sure if it was. Oh, oh, I have Thursday to night. tell Marlene. Okay. She yeah. Why don't you mention it? Well, I was just noticing that that um, next Wednesday night, the South County yeah. Senior Center there, Appreciation there, Night, six p.m. You don't have to. No. At our senior center. Um. So, what are we going to do about June? So we're going to meet on the 14th. 14th mm -hmm. is fine. I'm not here. Oh, no, no, no. That wasn't, that we weren't meeting on the 14th. We're meeting May 31st. And then, um, why do we have June 2nd down? Why do we have June 2nd here? What's it's June 2nd? Friday. That's graduation. Probably not a good oh. That. I don't know why we have the 2nd. Is that on the, uh, what why? Typo. Um, oh, it's, it's a typo? typo? Yeah. Okay, good, because I'm thinking I, like I'm already committed that June, night. Uh, okay, so that's a typo. So we're meeting the 31st. Look at your calendar. Um, we'll meet, meet um, Kip, Kip won't be here, but we can meet. Uh, so, I, oh, we're going to have, we already are going to have them come on the 31st. I was going to say. Thing. Six o'clock, that's what they said. Um, hmm. Do you want to meet the 13th? I'm not here that sixth? entire week. No, that whole week. You can oh, meet without me. No, 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 no. We were, Actually, we were. Well, do you want to meet the 6th? Do you say the 6th? If, if you wanted to, I mean, we're meeting that Wednesday, but I don't I'm know actually going to go to the open meeting law session at FERCOG that night. I have On a lot to, take, to say. On the 6th? <laughs> not the open meeting law, the public records. Oh, law. yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> um, or Thursday the 8th. I, I'm happy to meet any time. When, when, when are you going to be gone? It's just the 7th I can't do because I've got school committee. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. Um, other than that, I'm around. Oh, wait. That's well, the um, the 31st, though, is um, I can meet this it's, it's, so this, it's a week ahead. And um, so we don't normally, wouldn't normally meet the 7th. Do you want to skip no, warrant cycle. Right. Our okay. warrant cycle is the 14th, but we were going to meet... And we were going to skip the 14th because Wendy's not going to be here. Mm -hmm. But you can and meet. We could still meet. You can still meet. I guess we could. Pat, yeah. Pat could you take notes still? She's doing a great job. All right. right why, don't, why don't we just meet the 14th for real quick? Okay. Don't, don't schedule any appearances. Um, no, we're going to do that at 7? <laughs> yes. Yeah. We, we'll switch so over you, to 7 from now on 7. Now, because we were leaving it open until you told us to start. Oh, well, I, I'm not going to be here the 31st, so if you want to do it at 6.30, then I don't care. But in, once we get to June, if we could do it at 7, that's Sure, June. that's fine. No, that's fine. Okay. June 14th. Um, so um, June 14th at 7. Yep. Just don't schedule any appearances, okay, Pat? Because um, Wendy's not going to be here. And then we're not meeting the 21st. And then we, we won't meet the 21st. Oh, we won't. Okay. Because um, we have MAPCO that night. Because we have MAPCO. That's, you, have, you still have a meeting. You just can't. Just okay. not a select board meeting. Just not a select board meeting. A board of health meeting. So it's a good speaker. It's uh, um, we need to be Harvard reminded School of, that. of, of so Public Health I don't know if we speakers. Um, and then you've got the 28th of June. And then we have the 28th. Well, that doesn't matter. Is that okay? Yeah. You're not, gonna, you're not discussing and deciding anything at this MAPCO meeting, correct? We don't no. need to oh, post no, no. it in any uh, way. I would post it. I would post it. Yeah. Because we might, we, yeah, we wouldn't deliberate 
I don't think on anything particular. And that's taking place at the Perkins? No, no, it's at the Greenfield Country Club. At what time? Six to eight. Does it cost anything? I'm sorry, that's the 21st? You can show up at five. <laughs> I will show. I will be there at five. That's my. We have to have a certain number of people there, so we <laughs> so that we can get food. <laughs> so at five, you're saying you yeah. can show up? Yeah. Okay. Five. Yeah. And that's on uh, the twenty-first. Put that in five. Then. Karen, let me ask you. I was looking at this. I know it's gone by, but <clears throat> these people that were here, why, if they're giving the power companies giving the land to the fire district, why does it say that it's coming through the Franklin Land Trust? Because um, they're giving the land to the land no, no, trust. No, 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 no. The fire district, the the conservation yep. um, restriction is being held by the Franklin Land Trust. Because what what is the Franklin Land Trust does is guarantee that they will manage the stewardship of the property. Okay, um, conservation restriction ha requires that you guarantee um, that you're going to monitor the property to make sure that there's no building occurring, that it doesn't go into disuse, that your agricultural restrictions require that it stays in agriculture. So every year someone has to go out who is a certified person and then fill out the form. You walk the boundaries, you fill out the form that it's been maintained for whatever purpose. This is purpose, it's just woodlands, so, woodland, so it's, you know, to protect the water district so it's not. but what you do is you have to active agriculture that APRs require active agriculture so you have to prove that the, you know the land is actively used in agriculture and then you are sign off and the Franklin Land Trust it used to be the Deerfield Land Trust when we started it it was the Deerfield Land Trust but we Deerfield Land Trust merged with the Franklin Land Trust because of cost of staff sure. we just sort of dissolved it's, weren't there others in it too was it just two or was weren't there other land trusts that joined in? It could have been, but we, yeah. Deerfield got absorbed by the Franklin because we just, I mean, we, we were all volunteers. Nobody had any money. This way, they have paid staff. But they take on the responsibility of signing the paperwork and getting it to the state. And the state holds the paperwork to show that it's being, you know, that there is active stewardship. Usually, um, and the reason why the state does that is because they took money from the feds to um, pay for the conservation restriction, and that's part of the federal requirement. So it's like a chain that goes up, hmm. and you okay. have to be and you have to have, be right. willing to guarantee financially that you are doing this. Right, I'll let you move and we, that's June. why we don't want the responsibility as a town because we Was would have to do it ourselves. Dedication on the twenty-first. I had something down at two o'clock. The twenty-first of this month. Yeah, of of June. June. It's a Wednesday. Think. Yeah, I don't know. I had something in my phone, but I don't know if that was. First Monday night music is on the nineteenth. Oh yeah. Well, um, it's the kickoff for the summer evening. Oh group. good. And the group rock voices, which will have at least sixty voices, will be performing that night. Nice. Okay. Perfect. So, okay. so the di dick doesn't fade away. We are going to executive session, um, but I just want to remind people that the opioid opioid task force forum is here tomorrow night at six o'clock. All right. And Thank you. Have to read your... Yes, twenty eighth of June. So we're going to meet um, the fourteenth, but no scheduling. We'll keep it to a minimum. We'll sign the warrant, all that kind of stuff. And the 28th is if people need to come in or we'll have a longer meeting because Wendy will be here. We'll <laughs> wait. Wait, wait. Supposed to go the other way around. All right. We have to vote to go into executive yes, so session. To cons You have to read this. I make a motion to enter into executive section uh, to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property if the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. I. Uh, we'll second. I'll second. Um, I do declare it, so. I, McDaniel. I, Ness. I, Henry Camosa. We will not be um, coming back into open session. We will 
um, just go home, adjourn and go home. Thank you.